Earnings and production reports from some of the world's biggest mining companies over the last few days have been a bit of a disappointment. And those that have been looking for some upside certainly would have been disappointed with some of the big news headlines we've had uh, from the big companies in the sector. Let's start off with Rio Tinto. Just showing a share price chart here, you can see quite clearly the far right hand side, these declines we've seen over the last few days. Its flagship iron ore division has made a very weak start to the year as component failures at newly built mines constrict production and force the company to look for replacement infrastructure with the war in Ukraine. Parts for machinery can be hard to be found. Rio's Australian iron ore export slumping 8% below the same period last year to 71.5 million tonnes and it posted a slow start to this year as well. You can see this vertical line we've got at the bottom here with the COVID lows. We are off those but nonetheless this has been a very much of a disappointing uh, month or so for the stock of Rio Tinto. Analysts had expected Rio exports to slump, but the result will still be worse than most forecasts. UBS had expected Rio to ship 72 million tonnes in the period of iron ore, while RBC had expected 73.1 million tonnes. So at 71.5 million, it was a big disappointment. So where do we go from here? The MACD is pointing lower. Could we see more declines? Possibly, but it does depend very much on whether or not uh, the miner can start to regroup and take advantage of some of these big uh, gains in some of the markets that we've seen in terms of iron ore prices, of nickel and copper and so forth. Let's move on to what's happening with BHP, another company that's produced numbers recently. And again, you can see we're on a third day of declines at the moment, but it is nonetheless in this uptrend. In its nine month trading update, it cautioned on nickel and copper. Fully nickel production, it said, had been downgraded uh, for the guidance due to labour shortages arising from the COVID pandemic. And copper also suffering from labour shortages and also because of protests by workers and environmental activists. BHP owns the world's largest copper mine, uh, Escondida. Now, I want to show you a chart of a smaller cap company. This is a main listed business. It's Sol Gold. It's suffered a lot recently. Now, it's just produced a pre-feasibility study uh, for what uh, is described by some as being one, potentially one of the big new copper mines to come online. IG recently caught up with Sol Gold's chief executive, Daryl Kazubo. Sol Gold is bringing on uh, this massive new copper deposit. And uh, Kazubo said it's clear that the world will be woefully short of copper. I would argue that there are short term uh, trends at play and long term trends at play. And the short term trends are obscuring the long term trends. So if you just if you just park the short term uh, dynamics, and just think about the long-term dynamics. The long-term dynamics are that as the transition to renewables picks up, uh, to electric vehicles, you, you must need more copper. If you look at those trends to renewables, we're continuing to underestimate the rate of change. Therefore, if we can't estimate that accurately, we're not gonna estimate the rate of uh, demand growth for copper. So when I talk about us being seven Escondidas short at the end of the decade, I think that's a very optimistic scenario. The reality is going to be greater than that. So that's going to put a lot of pressure on the copper price at exactly the time when Cascavel starts producing, producing copper. Well, let's look at the copper price because uh, we saw the COVID lows here, which hit lows not seen since January 2016 at 43.70. We've seen it rise past the $10,000 level recently. And in fact, it did that first time back in May. Uh, but it is holding this price and it's now got this nice little uptrend that's on the way. And as Daryl Kazuba was saying, uh, there's the chance that uh, copper prices will continue to rise because of the deficit that the world is facing. And from this, let's move on to another big copper producer, Antofagasta, out today with an update. And look at this big decline. It's got down 8.43% uh, for Antofagasta. Um, another of the world's largest mining companies, uh, it's seen its first quarter production of gold, copper and molybdenum all dropping significantly. Copper output, it says, was down by a margin of 41% compared to the previous three months on the back of an ongoing drought at the Los Palambras uh, mine in Chile and lower grades at the Centinela uh, mine. One bit of good news though was from Antofagastra. It said that copper production is expected to rise quarter on quarter through the year while rising metal prices have helped revenues. Now this is giving some 
um, idea to the thought that perhaps possibly maybe uh, we could be seeing some of the lows put in place by some of these big mining companies. At the moment, though, these big declines, I think we've really got to take out some of those short positions before we can uh, move up on this. Let's change the chart as well to Anglo-American, another one out with uh, numbers today. And you can see it's broken this uptrend with a drop of in excess of 9% on the London markets. This also trades in South Africa. Anglo-American has downgraded its full year production guidance for its major commodities and indicated that its first quarter performance was challenging. Uh, Anglo-American said copper production declined by a whopping 13% to 140,000 tonnes for the first quarter ended March from 160,000 in the same quarter last year uh, due to planned lower grades. But like Antofagasta, Anglo-American has maintained its 2022 copper production guidance. So the longer term, we could well see a return to this uptrend uh, for the stock. But another drag was iron ore production at Anglo-American, which fell by 19% year on year as high rainfall in plant and machinery issues affected output. So you can see all the big mining companies under pressure. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGCom, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.